classic rags to riches story. From no shoes in St. Elizabeth to her very own jet, Trisha Bailey refused to let racism get in her way, learning as she put it, to suck it up. Trisha Bailey has made good, worth hundreds of millions of US dollars, and not yet 50. Barefoot and without water and electricity in Woodland, St. Elizabeth, but new horizons ahead after migrating to the US at 13. Starting a recruiting business, was a stockbroker, made her first million at 35, selling medical equipment and supplies before getting into the US and international commercial real estate market, including Jamaica. Recently gave away record sums to an American university. Bailey keeping it real in an interview with ER. Not too stush to pose at a bus stop on Oxford Road. But heading back to the US in her very own jet, thank you. So what did Bailey have to say? Oh, what do you want to say? She said lots. Why did you have to leave Jamaica? For a better opportunity. America is the only country that you can really, truly, they, they, when they say it's paved with gold, it is the only country that you can actually go from walking barefooted with no electricity and running water to becoming the Trisha Baileys of the world. So that's why. But they also say about America, it's racist. The system is not designed for people like you and who look like you to succeed. It is definitely designed not for people that look like myself. Um, one of the things that I did was I stayed focused. Focus. I'm, a, I'm one of those people who my blinders are always on. Like in the horse race, you put the blinders on the horse so that they don't look around. When I open a store, I don't care about my competition. I don't even care if they're right next door to me because I know what I provide and how I'm going to do it. And I go with it. When it becomes difficult, I fall back on God and I keep praying and then I keep working and then I keep praying some more until I get to the point where I am now. Bailey focused on success, but determined and stubborn in the way of immigrants, and also good at maths. Money was forever something that I knew that you, you can't romp with it. You need to make sure that you're saving. When I was in high school, my mom gave me $10 for, per week for lunch. And at the end of the week, I had $6. Now, she gave the same money to my sister, and Tuesday, she, was, she didn't have no more money left. But uh, so I've always been structured, discipline and I, tr I truly believe that God chose me to be in this place. Are Jamaicans, Jamaican immigrants to America even more motivated to do well than say black Americans? Absolutely, I, absolutely. Because what happened, Jamaicans and Caribbeans that come migrate to the US, we don't feel like you need as a handout or we are privileged or we're expected to be given certain things. We know that we have to work for every single thing that you have and sometimes it just means you gotta suck it up. One of the reasons why I started my first company is because I was told, um, I didn't know that you were black. And so I started getting harassed and I said, okay, well now I have to create my own. And I created my own destiny. Was it hard to suck it up? Oh yes, it's always hard. And how bad was it sucking it up? One of the things that I do, I live in every moment. So if it's a moment where I'm experiencing the deepest level of racism, which I do until today, two weeks ago, I'm experiencing it still. I don't live there. I will experience it. I know it's happening, but I keep my blinders on and I'm progressing and I'm making changes and adjusting so that I can go back and say, you know what? You didn't want to serve me in your restaurant. I'm going to come back and buy it and kick you out. How wealthy are you? How much money do you actually have? I have enough, I think. Can you, can you give us life. a figure? Um, there, there's a figure that I'm seeing looking at some document which says 700, up to 700 million US dollars. And it's, I'm in the vicinity. I'm in the vicinity, a little bit less than a billion um, US dollars. In terms of lifestyle, tell us about the life you live in America. Does it match the sort of lifestyles of people who generally have that kind of wealth? Yes, yes. Uh, so my lifestyle is, um, I, most of my time, I like to spend with my little people, my little kids, my children. 
Um, but my lifestyle is definitely a very, very privileged one. Um, from, I have all the resources I possibly can have. So yes, it does match what they would look at as the rich and famous lifestyle. What's the one toy you always wanted to have and know you have it? A jet. <laughs> That's that, yes, a jet. That's, that was a toy I wanted to have. Um, and I, now I travel that way. Bailey buying up real estate in Jamaica. So have a lot of other people. Wouldn't you say that a real estate bubble is being created in Jamaica? I don't think so. I think that Jamaica is very economically very wealthy and there's a lot of resources and opportunities, not just from people who are living here in the country, but also people who are abroad who are coming. And I believe that the baby boomers in, in the US, they are spilling over. So they are looking for resources and places to retire to. And we just happen to have the best country on earth. So why not? But what about boom and bust, inflation, and the threat of recession. In every economy, there's always corrections. So you might come down maybe 10, 20%, which we're expecting right now in the US to at least 30% downturn in the real estate market. But in 10 years, it's gonna continue. So when you invest, you have to invest for the long haul. That way, you're gonna reap the maximum benefit that you possibly can. In this sort of cycle though, the poor generally get poorer and the rich get richer. Have you gotten richer? I have resources that, yes, I have gotten richer. Um, so that's where my heart lies. I want to be able to put my hand back to every person to walk next to me. I never want to be the only one. So that's the reason why I'm charitable. That's the reason why I'm a philanthropist. She says she sent 270 Caribbean youngsters to university, donated over 4 million meals during the pandemic. She's a giver, but it was a sizable gift to the University of Connecticut that got the headlines. The reason why I chose University of Connecticut is because they gave me my first start. They gave me my first opportunity. They gave me my scholarship. If I didn't have the scholarship going there, I couldn't be me. I don't know where I would be, to be honest. So that's the reason why I chose my university that gave me the love, the support, and the boost that I needed in order to become the entrepreneur that I am today. Where are you at mentally now? Can you actually even process all that's happened in your life? I, I can't, I can't. Honestly, um, I am still the little girl from Woodland who believe that every person should be treated with love and kindness. And I still do that today. But is there any such thing as the benevolent millionaire, almost billionaire? Don't you have to be ruthless to make the kinds of money you've made and to keep that money in your coffers? No, you do not have to reroute this. I am, I don't think anyone, at my staff, one of my employees, one of the managers described me as, I rule with a iron fist, but a delicate heart. I am a businesswoman, so I'm stern and I will make decisions quickly, but you do not have to be ruthless and be unkind in your development as it relates to money. What's the one thing that the Jamaican government can do that could be transformational in Jamaica? The one thing, I, I, I really believe that in order to transform the country, you have to put money in education. I, I believe that's how the transformation will happen, is to put money into the bright minds and develop them to become the Trisha Baileys of the world. No need to bring a barrel back home, but family and friends do benefit from Baileys largesse. And if they start a business, I'm right there with them, holding their hands, walking them through it. Now I have boundaries. It's not a handout. You have to work for it. I have to work for it. And as long as I see that that work is there and that discipline and your morals remain intact, because what happened with people, when money comes, morals start going out the window. Your morals have to stay intact in order to engage with me because otherwise I, don't, I can't be around you. Did you vote for Donald Trump? No. Absolutely not. <laughs> no. Do you want to see the return of Donald Trump? Absolutely not. <laughs> Do you contribute to the Democratic Party? I have contributed to the Democratic Party, yes. Do you think Joe Biden should run again? No. I voted for uh, Carmela. So, no, I do not think Joe should run again. I think that he's aged his time out of office. But Kamala hasn't turned out to be very much of a successful VP, has she? But guess what? My daughter, who is uh, eight, my little girls, 
they look and see I could become the vice president of the United States. So that's why I voted for her because she looked like me. But will the Republicans winning the midterms be good for you? When Republicans win, it's always good for me. Now, my moral compass is a whole different story. <laughs> my love, y'all put me by the spot, you know? <laughs> Not sure Trisha Bailey is Jamaica's richest woman ever, but she has to be up there.